Happy Thanksgiving, folks. This is not Barry White tonight giving you this uh, video on the Tesla play that we played on Wednesday. No, it's your guru with a big cold. However, I'm sure I can manage to um, give you a little idea of what I saw on this Tesla play on Wednesday. And I'll probably walk you step by step exactly what I was looking for and how I usually um, organize my play while I'm doing it. So let's look at this. Um, let's move out here for a second. This is the one minute chart. This is one minute chart when it opens on Tesla. And if you look at the ticker, it's falling down at the open. And when you look at this, you cannot have an idea about whether it's going to pop or not. There's nothing looking at this here telling you, hey, I'm going to go in for calls because that will be a shot in the dark. You have no idea whether it's going up or down. However, what I'm about to show you is probably one of my favorite setups. And it's a setup that we can, that we've covered before. Look back in a lot of videos. We've uh, showed you this before. And I hope it can be in your toolbox for the trades to come. So as I, as I was saying, look in the, looking at this cannot tell you to go in or not. And the idea is to be prepared to what if it goes to a certain line. So let's zoom out of here. I'll put this on a five minute just so you guys can see it clearly. Um, this was the previous day. Previous day was just a tiny little bit higher. Um, at the, uh, you know, it's very close to 162-ish or something. And this was the low of the previous day. It popped. It bounced. It bounced on something. It popped. It came down a little higher. So it, this becomes a higher low. Tesla really likes higher lows. When you see a higher low in Tesla, usually, I mean usually, it will rise afterwards. Now, if it had tested a little lower than, the, let me make this clear here. This is the low. If it had tested a little lower, I would have passed. I would have said, uh, okay, let's forget about it. But what we're talking about here is to look at what happened on the previous day. And look what happened on the previous day was this. It became a little higher. So to me, this is bullish, right? We started rising afterwards. And then at the open, it started tanking. Where to? Well, pretty darn close to where we were at the... Um, on the previous day. So this becomes support, right? Now is the time to zoom in and see what's happening. Let's shift this to the one minute again, because literally when the market opens, uh, I don't know about you, but you know, if you want to scalp, you're not on the 15 minute chart. You're looking at something a little on a shorter time frame. So um, this is the open on Wednesday morning. So this is how it opened. We are opening, moving down, moving down to uh, 1062, and then it started rising. And when this is happening, you have this wick, which is a higher low, and then it started bouncing. Now, this is when I started to be interested because of what? Because this line was set from the previous day. I had an alert on the low of the previous day. I wasn't looking at the Tesla chart at that time. I was only looking at something else. And when this alerted, oh, Tesla is breaking the low of the previous day. What is it doing? So I pulled up the chart and this is what I saw. I see Tesla bouncing pretty much very close to what the low of the previous day was. It's bouncing up, creating a higher low. Now, what if it does this and then it falls? This can happen. So we need to be prepared ahead of time to know where's the next support on the way down. So 
This is all happening within, let's say, one minute, right? So I shift to the one hour chart and I look for I look for support. Zoom out. Oh, okay, here it is, right? You see that this was support. You know, this yellow line is the same one we were watching before. So it this acted as resistance and then it became support, lost it. Um, so it's telling you that for a good period of time, this was support, an area where, is there, where there was congestion. So you have a few factors coming in here. Um, we have the previous support. I'm still on a one minute chart here. I have a previous support on the previous day, um, a higher low, and then moving up. Same thing here. Support from the previous day, and then we saw a higher low. Of course, you can wait forever and see if it's going to provide an, another higher low or something, but I was under the impression that soon after the bell, it's 9.42, zooming, zooming in, zooming in on this. Sorry about the Barry White voice, folks. I'm, uh, I'm getting over it. But uh, um, in fact, I'll tell you, honestly, I would like to, to, to keep the Barry White uh, voice, but I, I want to lose the cold. So, um, so this, we're bouncing, moving up. And this is where I got interested. I was looking at the one hour chart to see support if we ever start to fall any later. And then we bounce from here. I mean, this is a split second decision, right? And I alerted right here, believing that we would probably start rising um, higher. I alerted the 1150 calls. I'll show you that why in a moment. And I believe this was three dollars thirty five for um the eleven fifty and we alerted that at nine um nine forty two nine forty two we alerted the at three thirty five which is exactly there why showed you before support from previous day there was a support on this line on the previous day and a higher low now target I said we're going to 1120 target. Now, why, how did this come to my mind? And why did I pick the 1150? Look at this. I'll move up to the five minute again. And like I said, it's always split second. Where are we going? Where are we going is this. First area is where? The other support they just started tanking came to support started rising lost support and then it became resistance so this is an area of interest so you've got that 113 um, yeah 113 but in the pre-market there was an area where we had a little spike and where this was you can believe me 1120 and the other area of interest is a little higher and it's this one here see where it oh, sorry about that here that area is 1140 ish 44 i believe you know it started bouncing so old support here is and here's old support becomes old resistance so if we go through all these lines you know this this first one the second one and we reach this 1144 we'll be pretty darn close to be in the money at 1150 plus 1150 or 335 if we look closer to the money let's say 1120 they would have been a lot more expensive and I didn't feel like spending uh, $800 and $900 per contract on, on a play on Friday. So I believe that $335 was a um, reasonable price to pay for something that was possible to get to $1,150. I'm not saying we're, get, we're going to get there, 
But I came very quickly with the assumption that we will at least rise to the pre-market resistance. Pre-market is where people were willing to buy. And now this is only a few hours later. I mean, this, this happened at the beginning of the day on Wednesday. So a few hours later, do you think a lot of things have changed? I don't think so. So let's move out of here and I'll show you. 11.20 and I'll put the cursor right on it. See? This is the line that I had in mind, right? So this is my target. Pre-market activity. We've shown you this before and it's still happening. So we alerted here and exited exactly on the line at 11.20. Pretty close to what we had targeted. But we don't have to be in the money to make money. That's a good thing. We alerted here at 11.50 at 3.35. And we exited right here um, only in minutes because this was um, 10.02. And we were looking at 960 for a very respectable, and I will write this here, 187% in, what, 20 minutes? Precisely 20 minutes. So it's just a matter of setting up an alert from the previous day. It popped up. You know that. Support is holding high or low, and your target doesn't have to be the moon. It's just here, pre market activity. It's not going to cross up before it starts to see resistance. See what it did? It tested and tested. And I'll show you something else, right? We showed you this support line before, you know, the 113 line, right? where it started, um, sorry, it started uh, tanking here to support, right? And then it moved, now the resistance. Now let's get back to what happened. See, now yeah, it's doing the same thing, bouncing, just like a magnet, right? So obviously when you look at it afterwards, it looks like magic. However, if you are prepared ahead of time, and you know it's going to look similar to that. You plan ahead the entry. And when you enter, you know where you're exiting. I hope I make it sound super easy. With this voice is really nice. And I hope you guys are learning. So thank you for watching. And I'll share more in time comes when the time comes so make sure to subscribe and like if you guys are learning have a good one folks we uh oh uh why me it's our Thank <laughs> you.